Hi everyone, welcome to Aussie Prison Stories. Today I'm going to be talking about my life, my upbringing and talk about my prison life. Okay, so I got uh, three brothers three sisters and we grew up in a suburb of Sydney called Liverpool um, it wasn't you know it wasn't a good upbringing at all my mother and my father were both you know hooked on drugs and drinking heavily um, my mother's been to prison, my father's been to prison, and I remember the clearest day, like it was yesterday, that every single time that we used to go and visit my mother, and I was roughly about five years old, and my father used to stuff some drugs in my nappy in my nappy to take it in um, and and that happened like every second weekend and also done the same thing for my father when he went to prison and you know I was, I was about seven years old then and, and um, you know obviously I wasn't wearing nappies at seven years old <laughs> but um, what what they used to do was my mother used to put it down my pants and my undies and you know to take the drugs in to the prison to my father you know because my father he got charged with armed robbery and assault um, I think he was like in prison for something like five six years or something um, my mother she ended up going to prison and she did two and a half years for shoplifting um, so yeah it wasn't it wasn't like it wasn't a good upbringing you know and my father was you know like not only a heroin addict but he was an alcoholic and very abusive he used to beat us kids all the time you know it was so rough you know and I just got I just got fed up in the end, I just got fed up in the end, you know, and when, when uh, I was 12 years old, I ended up running away because what happened was me and, not all of us, but only me, my sister and one of my other brothers, you know, we got taken off them by docks, which is community service here, you know, and, um, and they put us in foster homes, put us in foster homes, and I didn't like that at all, and so I ran away, you know, I ran away and ended up on the streets, and, you know, and this is was like, you know, 12 years old, you know, I was 12 years old then, and, uh, I ran away, ended up on the streets of King's Cross, you know, and back in those days, in the, in the early, in the early 90s, especially the early 90s, you know, it was very, very rough back then in, in King's Cross, you know, and uh, the main road that goes through it is Darlinghurst Road, and, you know, that's called the Golden Mile, it used to be called the Golden Mile, you know, and, uh, you used to have like along the main street you know on one side you'll have like a whole heap of Tongans on one side and a whole heap of Tongans on the other side you know selling coke and whatever but yeah I don't want to say too much about that because I don't want to put their business out there you know too much of it and uh, I don't want to be dry snitching on them but um yeah, I ended up in the streets of King's Cross at 12 years old. I ended up meeting a couple other street guys, 
you know, and uh, they were addicted to heroin. They were addicted to heroin themselves at the time. And uh, they said, you want to try something? You know, I'm 12 years old, I'm a kid, I didn't, I mean, I know what heroin was and what it can do to you. You know what I mean? Obviously because of my father. And uh, and obviously I didn't know how to, didn't know how to do myself, so you know they shot me up with some heroin, and that was it. It was over. You know, it was over for me from that point on. You know, just that one shot at twelve years old, and I got hooked on heroin. You know, and things went downhill from there. You know, and um, I had to start doing crime to support my habit. You know, like I was first, you know, I was first doing burglaries. You know, that's what it's called in America, burglaries. Over here, we call it beanie. You know, which is bragging And um, what I used to do, what I used to do was I used to go to the apartment blocks, right? And I used to climb up. I used to climb up like to the probably third or fourth floor climb up on the balcony and over the balcony because, you know, back then they they never ever locked their balcony door. So I used to go do that, climb up, I used to climb up over the balcony and, you know, and get into the apartment that way, you know. I think about it now, it's pretty messed up because I wouldn't like someone coming into my house when I'm asleep, you know what I mean, but yeah. I used to go into, you know, I used to burglarize people's places at night, you know, all the way up in the morning, probably two, three, four in the morning, you know, and uh, I get in there and I find the valuables and, you know, steal whatever is of, of value and, and, and take us, you know, all the cash that I could find and, you know, get out of there and that eventually led stealing cars, went from burglary to stealing cars, um, and I first, I first got arrested, on my, my first ever charge as a juvenile was stealing a car, you know, that was my first charge, and I ended up going to a juvenile detention centre here called Minda, I went to Minda, and I got, I got 18 months, I got 18 months, you know, I was 14 years old, 14 years old, and yeah, that was my first charge, still in the car, went to Minda, done 18 months, got out, you know, straight back to the cross, straight back to the streets, you know, start using heroin again, and things, you know, progress from there, and, um, I started doing street robberies, robbing people on the street at knife point, you know, and uh, trust me, I'm not proud of it, I'm not proud of it, but I did what I had to do to survive at the time, you know, and um, started robbing people on the streets at knife point, and then I ended up getting into armed robberies. Uh, I, I committed my first armed robbery when I was 16. Um, thankfully, oh yeah, I didn't get caught for that one, you know, so I was pretty lucky there. Pretty lucky there. I've got away with a lot of stuff, you know, touch wood. <laughs> and, um, but my first serious charge as an adult was on robbery when I was 18 years old and uh, I ended up getting four and a half years for that and I went to prison my first prison that I went to was Long Bay Correctional Center here in Sydney in the eastern suburbs and like I said before in my last video I didn't last 24 hours there, and 
end up getting in a fight, and then I end up stabbing the guy, stabbed him two times in the stomach, and then I got shipped off to Goulburn, and back in those days, Goulburn was known as the Killing Fields, you know, <laughs> it was, oh, it was, it was terrible, you know, it was, it was so violent, it was so rough, you know, and uh, here I am, you know, 18 years old, in a maximum security prison, you know, in, in Goulburn, which is the killing fields, and um, I, I ended up serving the remainder of my time, and um, after four and a half years, I ended up serving that air in, in, uh, in Goulburn, you know, and um, what I used to do, you know, to, to pass the time, to pass the time and, uh, you know, just try and get myself busy and, you know, just try not to think about being in prison, you know, and uh, I used to wake up, I used to wake up in the morning, work out, you know, work out a bit with my cellmate, you know, and, uh, Go out in the oval, jog around, you know, go the go to go to the weight pile and you know, like pump some weights out and and uh, have a bit of bring come back to the cell, have a bit of breakfast, you know, then jump in the shower. Jump in the shower and have a shower, you know, and uh, and then you know, like we used to play cards. Play cards, you know. We used to play a card game here called Forty Eight. You know, it's uh, probably how can I how can I explain? Uh, Forty Eight, probably a bit similar to poker. You know what I mean? And uh, but I used to play cards. I used to I used to draw. You know, I used to draw. I you know like started doing a bit of tattoo work. I wasn't too good at that, but yeah, I ended up, uh, ended up getting rid of that, and, uh, got a little side hustle, you know, selling weed, I was selling weed in there, selling weed in there, and I was making a bit of money with that, on, you know, and, uh, on top of my sweeper's job, because I was a sweeper of the wing, which is, you know, a guy that cleans the wing, serves at the mills, you know, and, uh, Allocates, you know, like uh, sheets, all that sort of stuff. The bedding to the new inmates, you know, and uh, because my first job that I had was in the, in the laundry, and that was a terrible job. Hot as hell in the laundry, you know, but um, yeah, that was, that's how I used to pass my time there in Goulburn. And I got out after doing my four and a half years on parole. I got out on parole, and uh, I don't know how it is, like in America or any other country, but he, you know, you, when you get out on parole, you get released from prison on parole, you're supposed to report to him within 24 hours of, of being released, but I never did that. I never reported to him once because there was no point because I knew that, you know, it wouldn't be too much longer before I was back in there. And, uh, because I used to get out, you know, I mean, I've done 17 years, I've done 17 years all up, you know, and, um, in and out, in and out. And I used to get out and I was out for maybe two months. You know, I'll re-offend, I'll re-offend, and then, like, I'll go back to prison, you know, and I got out, yeah, sure enough, two months later, I was back in there, I was back in there, in prison, you know, this time for drug dealing, because I ended up starting to sell drugs, you know, I was selling heroin, you know, and, uh, so I heard I wanted to support my habit, you know, and, um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't 
in this modded mood. Uh, selling heroin on the streets. And it's because, you know, I was pretty young. I was only pretty young then. <laughs> you know, because I was 22 years old. Here I am on the streets. In Sydney, 22 years old. Selling heroin. And I had to carry a knife on me back in those days because uh, it, it was just the way it was. And uh, so, yeah, I was out for two months. I was selling heroin. Just pulled my head and I got busted. I got busted for selling, for selling heroin, and um, because I, I because I refused to talk to the cops, you know, I told them to go and fuck himself, you know, because they said to me, oh, you can make this easy on yourself, tell us who you're working for, blah, 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 you know, and all I said to them, go and fuck yourself, go and fuck yourself on my same fucking shit. Take me to me fucking cell, get out of me face, you know, and, uh, because I believe, I mean, I've always had the mentality that, you know, if you do the crime, you do the fucking time, you know, there's none of this fucking getting into the cop shop and, you know, bloody doing this, fucking lip smacking, you know, I mean, damn, you know, so, I ended up going to court. Ended up going to court, and, you know, and I got, uh, I think it was like 19 months, 9 to 20 months, and it wasn't much, it wasn't much heroin, like I got caught with 6 caps, 6 caps of heroin, uh, you know, and, and they were like, you know, $100 caps, uh, probably say, a gram each, you know, probably like a gram each they were, and uh, I got 19 to 20 months for that, and uh, you know, and I ended up getting sent, I got sent to Bathurst, I got sent to Bathurst, so that's not a bad jail, that's probably like maybe two hours from Sydney. I ended up getting close and I ended up getting close and after a while I got a B classification, maximum security classification, uh, B1, and after about six, seven months, because I was doing programs, you know, doing education programs to try and help myself better myself and you know it lowered my level it lowered my level my bad about the plane y'all um it lowered my level and i ended up getting reclass reclassified and i got a c1 classification and they sent me to x-wing x-wing in bathurst and that was pretty cool you know i met a lot of cool guys in there uh, a couple of guys I still talk to to this day, you know, pretty staunch stand up dudes, you know. I've done my time there, done the rest of my time there, and then, like, just spend, you know, like, I'll you know, get out a couple of months back in, you know, so. First sentence was four and a half years, second sentence, 20 months, you know, then. Here and there, bits and pieces here and there, you know, like six months, two months, three months, a year, two years, you know, 17 years, all up I spent in prison, you know, I'm 44 now, you know, I'm 44 now, but um, I eventually, you know, woke up to myself and changed my life because the last time I got out of prison was about seven and a half years ago now. I've been out for seven and a half years, you know. And um, my last offence that I got charged with was assault, occasional actual bodily harm, you know. And uh, the reason why I got charged with you know, this 
all the judgment of bodily harm is because, I mean, I know it had nothing to do with me, but I wasn't going to, you know, just walk past and let this woman get beaten, you know, by this guy, you know, and uh, it was her boyfriend, on and off, on and off again, boyfriend, don't end up finding out, you know, and um, it was beating because I, because like I heard, heard screaming and I'm like, what the hell's that? And I turned around and here's this, here's this poor woman getting beaten by this guy. No one's doing nothing. Nobody's doing nothing. Just walking past doing nothing. So I just couldn't take it. So I, I ran up and grabbed him and then fucking, I beat his ass. You know? And I said to him, I said to him, I said, oh, do you like beating women, do you? I got something for you. You know, and I fucking beat his ass, and because I fucking broke his jaw and broke his nose, you know, got charged. I got charged with assault, cutting up his body arm, and I done two years for that. And that was my last charge and the last bit of time that I served. You know, and I got out, and I sat down and I had to reassess. You know, I had to reassess my life. So I was still using drugs in prison. I was still using heroin in, in prison. And I was still you know, doing all this stupid shit that I, you know, in prison that I was doing on the streets. You know, and uh, so I got out and I just had to, you know, like sit down and just think about things, you know. And I thought to myself, damn, I'm sick of this fucking life, you know, of using heroin. I used heroin for fucking 12 years, you know, 12 years I used fucking heroin, you know, and uh, that took a big toll on me, and I mean, I should have been dead you know, four or five times, I mean, damn, I lost my life four or five times, you know, because I got fucking stabbed in the head, and, you know, busted eye, and shit, that's why my eyes all fucked up, you know. I just got tired of the life, got tired of the life, you know, using heroin, having to, you know, always find a way to get my hit for that day, you know, and in and out, in and out of prison, I got sick of it, you know, so what I ended up doing was I, I rented this house, I rented this house, it was only a little, little two-bedroom house, and it was it was in a suburb, you know, a town called Nara. It was a town called Nara. It's probably about five hours from Sydney. And I went down there and I locked myself into the house to get you know to get clean, get myself off the fucking drugs, you know. And um, I locked myself in there for about six weeks. And in that six weeks, I went through hell. Went through absolute fucking hell. You know, I was sick as a dog, you know, and fucking, I was laying in my own spew and, you know, fucking pissing myself and shit myself and shit like that. And that was bad. I nearly fucking died. You know, but I was determined to get through it, you know, because I, I always had the mentality that, you know, because I got myself into that fucking mess, I was determined to get myself out of it, and not let it beat me, you know, and what I mean by, I wouldn't let it beat me, is, you know, fucking ending up in the cemetery, or in prison for the rest of my life, because one of those things could have happened quite easily, you know, so I ended up getting clean, those six weeks passed and I got clean and I got myself better, you know, and, um, yes, it was hard, it wasn't easy, you know, but I did it, you know, because I've always had a strong mindset, you know, if I put my mind to something and I really, really focus on it, or, you know, and I'm determined, I'll do it, you know, so I got myself clean, got myself clean. I had to change you know, places, people, and things. You know, and, uh, 
ended up meeting a nice girl, got a good girlfriend, and settled down with her, ended up getting a good job, you know, and I've had a lot of jobs over the years, you know, and um, yeah, I've been clean now for what, seven and a half years, I haven't been in prison in seven years, you know, I changed my life, I'm doing really well now, you know, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm in a good place, you know, and uh, one thing I'm determined never ever to do is go back to prison. No matter how bad things get, it's never ever worth going back, you know, to your old ways because it's just not worth it, you know. And going to prison or, you know, using drugs doesn't make you cool. It doesn't make you cool, it doesn't make you tough, you know. And being out here and being free, I love being free because I can come and go as I please and do what I want. And, you know, so yeah, I changed my life up, changed my life completely, you know, and, um, and so, you know, I just wanted to get my story out, you know, and uh, to, you know, give you guys a bit of an idea about me, who I am, where I've been, how I got to you know, how, how my life led up to me going to prison, and, um, and this, this video will be uploaded onto Harvey Talks Prison, it'll be uploaded on his channel, um, so look out for that, you know, he's a real stand-up dude, and, you know, yes, I uh, wanted to, you know, let you guys, tell you guys a bit more about me, Get the word out about my channel, Aussie Prison Stories, because uh, I've got 17 years of prison stories to tell, you know, and uh, my next video that I'm going to upload later on today will be hooking up with a female CEO, so look out for that one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the story, you know, telling you guys a bit about my life. Um, I would really, really appreciate if you would give this video a like, subscribe, comment and share this video and please look out for this video on Harvey Talks Prison and if you haven't subscribed to his channel please do so because he has great content, always, always uploads dope fire content. He's a stand-up guy. He done 29 years in prison in some of the toughest prisons in America. So, you know, I rock with him. I support him and what he's doing, and he supports me and what I'm doing. So, yeah, that's it for today. That's it for right now, guys. And uh, I'll catch you all again real soon. Please stay safe. Don't forget. To tell your family that you love them. Don't forget to tell your your partner, your girlfriend, your wife, your significant other. Don't forget to tell them that you love them. Because tomorrow is not promised, nor is it guaranteed. Stay safe. I'll talk to you all again real soon. Positive Prison Stories out. Peace.